Hi, this is Dr. Nina Naidu. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in New York City, and today I wanted to answer some frequently asked questions I receive about the tuberous breast deformity. What is a tuberous breast? A tuberous breast is one in which the base of the best breast is constricted. That is, during normal development, the brace breast doesn't grow outwards in all four quadrants as we expect. It only grows outwards usually in the first two quadrants, the upper quadrants of the breast. The base of the breast tends to be constricted. So what happens is that the breast grows outwards at the top and then the, since there's nothing to support it at the bottom, it tends to fall over. And it develops this kind of tuberous or tubular deformity, almost like a root. So that's how the deformity developed its name. So how is this diagnosed? Most of the time, patients diagnose themselves. Nowadays, patients are really well informed. They get on the internet, they research, they find someone else whose breasts look like theirs, and they, they just know that there's something not quite normal in the development of their breasts. Unfortunately, it's very frequently underdiagnosed by physicians. Uh, pediatricians do not receive any training in this. OBGYNs sometimes will recognize it, but typically not. Again, it's not just it's just not a part of their standard training. Most plastic surgeons can diagnose a tuberous breast, although with very mild deformities, sometimes it'll still be underdiagnosed. Um, so what are the different stages of tuberous breast? There's a French plastic surgeon named Grulot, and he developed three stages. He developed a classification system, which I find very helpful. So in stage one, the medial portion of the breast, that's the inside portion of the breast, is deficient. So that's the part that goes towards the middle of the breast, the sternum. In stage two, Grillo, the medial and lateral portions of the bottom of the breast are deformed. That is, that they're constricted. So what you'll see is that typical tissue at the top, but you won't see any tissue at the bottom. And in stage three, Grillo, all four quadrants of the breast are deficient. So you might see a little breast bud. So in a typical tuberous breast deformity, some of the things we'll see are constriction at the base of the breast, meaning that it's very narrow at the base. We'll see that tissue kind of falling over in a waterfall effect at the top of the breast. The areola, which is the pigmented part of the breast, may be enlarged. And what you'll notice is herniation of breast tissue through that enlarged area. So those are some of the typical findings that we see with this. Um, how do you fix the tuberous breast? It is challenging to fix. It is not as straightforward as a typical breast augmentation because we have to fix the underlying problem. So the general approach for the tuberous breast nowadays among most plastic surgeons is to use a periorelar incision, that is to use an incision around the pigmented part around the nipple, to go in through there to release the tissue at the base of the breast, that tight tissue that needs to be opened up, to make some cuts in that tissue to really, really open it up and release it, and then to put an implant in. Now, this becomes a little bit controversial in terms of whether we're putting the implant above the muscle or behind the muscle. There is a school of thought, and this is the more traditional thought, that you put the implant above the muscle to provide more pressure on the breast tissue to really push it out. However, I used to do that myself, but I have now switched to putting it underneath the muscle, as have some of my colleagues, because it runs into the problem of an increased risk of capsular contracture or scar tissue that forms around the breast implant. That's definitely higher whenever the implant is placed above the muscle. If a textured implant is used, that mitigates the risk to a certain extent, but I still find that patients have a better result if the implant is placed underneath the muscle. In order to achieve the best of both worlds, a lot of us will use what we call the dual plane technique. This is a technique that was developed by Dr. John Tubbets, who is a plastic surgeon in Dallas who's now retired. And in that technique, the bottom part of the muscle is opened up. So the implant can now sit very close to the breast tissue in the bottom, but it's covered by the muscle at the top of the breast. So it achieves the best of both worlds. Can you use fat instead of an implant in these cases? Yes and no. Again, this is controversial. My colleagues in France, for whom I have a great deal of respect, are very routinely using only fat grafting for tuberous breasts. They'll do some release of the constricted part of the bottom of the breast, and then they'll graft in a large amount of fat. Typically, these patients will need two or more gra fat grafting sessions because a certain amount of the fat is lost. I find, in my personal opinion, it doesn't give as aesthetic of a result as using an implant. An implant gives you a good result in one shot and really puts a lot of good sustained pressure against the bottom part of the breast, which is where we really need it to push out that tight part. So I personally prefer, prefer if patients agree to it, to use an implant in almost all these cases. I've been a little bit disappointed with fat grafting alone for the tuberous breast deformity. In some cases, I've had patients who have had a little bit of a recurrence of the tuberous breast, even with an implant. They'll get a little bit of a divot at the base of the breast. In those cases, sometimes we can go back and graft some fat into that divoted area, and that seems to work very well.
However, the reality of the tuberous breast is that it is challenging to treat. Sometimes we do need to do more than one treatment. For example, in GRULO3, where we have all parts of the breast deficient in tissue, in those cases frequently we'll do a staged procedure. So in those cases, we'll go in, we'll put in a tissue expander, which is a temporary implant. We blow it up like a balloon over a series of months until we get to about 30% larger than the final size we want to be. We let the tissue sit for about two to three months, let the breast accommodate to its new volume, and then we come back, we take out that implant, and we put in a permanent implant. And that seems to work very well for very severely deformed breasts. Another thing that we sometimes do in patients who have more severe deformities with a lot of hanging tissue is we may do a breast lift in conjunction with the breast augmentation. It really depends on your individual anatomy. Uh, tubular breast patients are extremely different from one case to the next, and very, very frequently, there's a lot of asymmetry between the two breasts. So that's another thing that very frequently will bring a patient into the office because they'll look at their breasts, something doesn't feel quite right, and they're also very different, very asymmetric between the two breasts to the point where they can't wear bras or clothing with any comfort. Um, another question I frequently get is, is this covered by insurance? Again, sometimes it's, it's just one of those things that's so hard to say. I personally consider this a reconstructive issue. I don't consider it a purely cosmetic deformity. So I do try and fight to get this covered by insurance. Not every insurance company agrees that this is a reconstructive issue. It's really, really tough. Some insurance companies will cover it, some won't. It depends on your particular plan as well. Some insurance plans will not cover anything related to the breast short of breast cancer, which they are legally required to cover. However, there's no legal requirement for any insurance company to cover congenital deformities of the breast. So what I recommend is when you're looking for this, if you're trying to get insurance coverage, just be patient with the process. Most of us are willing to try and get it covered by insurance. We can't guarantee it. And that's the first thing I tell patients. I can't guarantee this will be covered. So I always give patients the information, the financial information that they'll need in the event that it's not covered. So those are some of the main things I want to tell you about the tuberous breast. I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you want more information, please go to my website, www.niduplasticsurgery.com. I do have a full section on the tuberous breast. Sometimes it helps to look at pictures because, as I said, these cases are so different and so individual that sometimes you really need to have a visual to really get a good idea of what's going on. But thanks so much, and uh, take care.